As we've been reporting, President Obama has been hearing calls from within his own party to tap the strategic petroleum reserve in order to lower oil prices. Bloomberg's chief Washington correspondent Peter Cook has more on that part of the story. Peter, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mark. And one of those lawmakers pushing the president to tap the Strategic Petroleum Reserve has been Vermont Congressman Peter Welch. He's a member of the House Democratic leadership. He joins us now during this congressional rec recess from Burlington to talk about gas prices and some other issues. Congressman, first of all, thank you for the time. Appreciate you joining us. And uh, what do you make of the pushback today from the White House that it is not yet at this point prepared to tap the SPR? Are you disappointed with that decision? Well, I hope the president does tap the reserve. You know, the, the, it's a useful tool to send a shot across the bow and spook the speculators who are taking advantage of the uncertainty in Iran. And when presidents have done this in the past, uh, two Republican, two Democrat, it's lowered prices at the pump between 8% and 33%. And, you know, Goldman Sachs, which you may be talking about later, did a study that says about $23 on the price of a $100 barrel of oil is a speculation premium. And that translates into 56 cents on the price of a gallon of gas. You fill up your pickup, that's an extra $15. So I think the president should do this. It would be good for the consumer. Uh, the high prices, as the previous guest mentioned, are a real drag on the economy and the recovery. A drag on the economy and the recovery, but Congressman, the last time the president did this was the situation with Libya where there was concerns about a real supply interruption. We haven't really seen that yet. Is it justified to tap the SPR under these circumstances? Well, see, that's the debate. My view, the answer to that is yes. I think that this is an asset that belongs to the people of the United States. It's 800 million barrels. And when speculation uh, is adding so much to the price of gasoline, that threatens the economy. So I would, frankly, take a somewhat liberal view of this to have our asset, that strategic petroleum reserve, be deployed uh, on the behalf of consumers and small businesses that are getting hammered by these high gas prices. There's flexibility here at the administration level. And, Congressman, you know Republicans will insist that this is election year politics. If the president does tap the SPR, he did it to improve his own re-election chances. Well, you know, I've talked to some of my Republican colleagues, and they are really uh, bummed out about these high gas prices in their districts, too. I mean, there's no winners uh, in $4 gas. Uh, all of our consumers, the people who represent the small businesses, they're getting hammered. There's an enormous amount of election year politics about why gas prices are high, but I think there's a universal desire to take what steps we can to bring them down. You mentioned Goldman Sachs. The other big story that we've been talking about here on Bloomberg, here in Washington, on Wall Street, has been this op-ed in the New York Times coming from a, a former Goldman Sachs employee. You've been a critic of, of Wall Street over the last few years since the financial crisis. This op-ed, I'm sure you read it. Does it sound to you like a disgruntled employee or something that Congress should take a look at? Well, he's not a disgruntled employee. He's a very able person who just uh, told it the way it is. I mean, first of all, I think we all know that we have to have in this country a strong financial sector. We need it, and that includes Wall Street. But what that story told was about a Goldman Sachs firm, brilliant people, proud tradition, that's lost its way. You know, the financial sector has made its, it's, made its money and it's done well by being the advisor and the ally of its clients. And what that story talks about is how it flipped around and the, the Goldman, in some cases, made money at the expense of its clients. You know, Peter, the best example of this uh, was when Goldman put together that package of toxic securities at the request of one client who wanted to bet against it. After doing that, they went to the Rolodex and sold those bad securities as AAA-backed uh, securities to pension funds that it were other clients. And, you know, if you went to a Main Street banker and said, would you do that, they wouldn't do it. Well, you know, Congressman uh, Senator Levin, uh, his committee investigated that issue. Is there anything in this op-ed that prompts you and you're on the Government Oversight uh, Committee uh, to conclude that, uh, that Congress should step in and investigate Goldman Sachs further? Is there anything new here? Uh, I don't know that there's anything new. What is new and disappointing is that the culture of a proud organization, uh, which was all about helping its clients and succeeding with its clients, was turned upside down and it succeeded and made money at the expense of its clients. You know, there's certain things that aren't really about the law. It's about a culture in an organization. And what I'm alarmed at in the long run is that if we have a financial sector, it has to get back to the basics, and that is to be in service of the productive economy, 
not making the productive economy be in service of the financial sector. All right, Congressman Peter Wells joining us from Vermont, the Democrat. Thanks very much for the time again. Appreciate it, uh, Mark. We'll have more on this story, of course, throughout the afternoon. All right, Peter Cook, Congressman Wells, thank you both. And a reminder, you can catch all the top news on Goldman and all our videos of the day on our award-winning iPad app.